welcome to my homestead, and welcome to my channel. In this video, there's major news in Israel. Um, basically, uh, uh, someone defected from this kind of fledgling uh, alliance of political parties that put Naftali Bennett into office, and um, it was unexpected, and it has to do with the upcoming Passover and Feast of Unleavened Bread. So, uh, the person in question is this person right here. Um, so, she, okay, so let me just start reading from, from this. This is, uh, The Guardian, okay, here she is again, right here, uh, Edith Silman, I don't, I don't know if that's how it's pronounced, but, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, Israel's Naftali Bennett loses majority after, uh, MP quits coalition. Uh, Edith Silman's departure amid Roe, over Passover bread leaves P Prime Minister with the same number of seats as opposition, and you'll see what that means uh, to Naftali Bennett. So, a key member of Naftali Bennett's Yamina party has quit the Israeli coalition government after a row about unleavened bread during Passover in a surprise move that leaves the Prime Minister without a parliamentary majority. Edith Selman's announcement left Bennett's coalition, an alliance of parties ranging from the Jewish right and Israeli uh, doves to an Arab Muslim party, with 60 seats, the same as the opposition. Quote, I tried the path of unity. I worked a lot for this coalition. Uh, Silman, a religious conservative who served as a coalition chairperson, said in a statement, uh, Sadly, I cannot take part in harming the Jewish identity of Israel. So again, this has to do with uh, leaven bread. Okay, on Monday, Zilman lashed out at the health minister, Nitzan Horowitz, after he instructed hospitals to allow leaven bread products uh, in their facilities during the upcoming Passover holiday, in line with the recent Supreme Court ruling reversing years of prohibition. So upcoming, if we look at our, our calendar, the Hebrew calendar, uh, today... Uh, this is the day that she did it. It was today, Wednesday the 6th, and we have uh, Passover starting on the 15th uh, at sundown. And that's when uh, they do the Passover meal, and then during this entire time here, during the entire uh, Pesach observance all the way till the 23rd uh, of this month, um, you're not supposed to eat anything that has leaven in it, okay? So the problem is that they were, they were wanting to allow uh, 11 items to be in hospitals during Pesach, okay? And she is not for that uh, because she feels like it would be violating Jewish values. Uh, Jewish tradition bars leavened bread from the public during Passover. Quote, I am ending my membership of the coalition and will try to continue to talk my friends into returning home and forming a right-wing government, someone said. I know I'm not the only one who feels this way. Bennett's coalition can continue ruling with 60, seat, 60 seats, but faces difficulty passing new legislation. And then look at this. On top of that, if another member of the coalition defects, however, the Neset could hold a vote of no confidence and potentially lead Israel back to the polls after a fifth parliamentary election in four years. So let's look at the history of prime ministers. Okay, the last one that Israel had um, was Benjamin Netanyahu, right? He was there for a long time. Uh, he was actually there, if we pull up his Wikipedia page. Okay, so the first time he was there from 1996 to 1999, so for three years. Now pay attention to these numbers too, because I, I find them interesting. So first for three years, and then from 2009 to 2021, which is 12 years. So, being members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, does the number three uh, added to 12 have any meaning to us uh, for a total of 15? Um, I don't know if it means anything, uh, but it's just another one of those strange coincidences. But anyway, uh, regardless, he was in power for 12 years. If you just look at that by itself, even outside of an LDS context, uh, 12 is obviously an important number in Judaism, Christianity, uh, and then definitely to our church. So it's kind of interesting that he was there for 12 years, and then in a very unlikely move, uh, he was ousted. Okay, so 
what happened, uh, well, before we get to that, okay, so he served for a total of 15 years, making him the longest serving Israeli prime minister in history. Uh, he was also the first prime minister to be born in Israel after its declaration of independence. So what happened? Uh, he got ousted by Naftali Bennett. Um, I want to point out, it's interesting that they both have first names that are um, names of the tribes of Israel, which is not always the case with Israeli prime ministers. Um, it doesn't happen too often, but I don't know if there's significance of that. But we have Benjamin, and then we have Neftali, which this isn't spelled the same way as it is like in the Bible, but uh, it's the same thing. It's just a different spelling. Okay, so Bennett... Uh, the, th the interesting thing here, he entered politics in 2006, serving as chief of staff for Benjamin Netanyahu until 2008. So at one point, he was actually working for him. Um, and then after that, uh, on June 2nd, 2021, Bennett agreed to a rotation government with Yair Lapid, uh, whereby Bennett would serve as Israel's prime minister until 2023, which is next year. After which, uh, Lapid or Lapid would assume the role in 2025. Uh, another interesting year because that's when Temple Square uh, and the renovations are supposed to be done. And then uh, Bennett was sworn in on the 13th, which that's an interesting number, especially since he's the 13th Prime Minister of Israel. But anyway, he was sworn in on the 13th of June of last year, 2021. Here's the picture. Okay, so here's Naftali Bennett. Right here, I'm sure that you've, you've probably seen him before. He's the one that's currently uh, the Prime Minister. And then next year, it's supposed to switch over to Yair Lapid, which is this guy right here. Okay, now this could, this whole plan could be in jeopardy if uh, another person defects, and then if there's a vote of no confidence. So it, everything is kind of like potentially up in the air, because right now, after this just happened, if you're kind of not happy with how things are going with Naftali Bennett, and you're one of these coalition members, then uh, yeah, maybe you could step away and be like, you know what, we need to come up with another plan. Another plan. So uh, we're going to have to see what happens, but... Uh, here on Israel 365, where they focus more on like uh, the religious context of these different stories having to do with Israel, uh, it says here, um, okay, so the ruling coalition party teeters after a member of Bennett's own party left after a dispute over the Passover kashrut in Israel Israeli hospitals. One rabbi cited an ancient esoteric text which describes such a situation as a harbinger of the Messiah. <laughs> now, I've been covering this for a while, and there have been a whole number, a whole bunch of things that uh, they're calling signs that the Messiah is imminent. Uh, I know there's a lot of new people on the channel, uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to review what I've said before about this. Um, it doesn't matter that they're looking for a false messiah in the sense that it could still be significant to us that they are imminently expecting messiah because I feel like that is possibly the Lord just working on their minds and their hearts, preparing them for the second coming when Christ comes to the Mount of Olives, right? So even though they're expecting something different, their minds are still being like prepared to receive a messiah and then to enter into the messianic era uh which <clears throat> which they kind of view very similar to uh what we view about the millennium so it's like uh they have it wrong but their minds are still kind of prepared so anytime there's something like this i always take note because it's just another sign that they're just that much more prepared. Uh, we've been watching, you know, the Red Heifer. We've been watching the Temple Institute. Uh, we've been watching any time that there's been any major events. In fact, there was one recently. Uh, this was just last month. This, this is still just like a few weeks ago. There was another really huge happening in Israel where this man right here, this is... Uh, Rabbi Chaim uh, Kanevieski, I, I don't care how it's pronounced, so don't 
tell me how to pronounce I don't care. Uh, Rabbi Chaim Kanevieski, one of Israel's leading religious authorities, dies at 94. Uh, as a side note, I pointed this out last time when I did the video about him. Look at how old and just like ancient he looks. And then compare that to uh, President Nelson. Let's pull up. Let's see. President Nelson LDS. Okay, let's look at him. Let's just look at this picture. <laughs> let's just look at this picture right here. And uh, let's do a side by side. So here, here we have a 97 year old. And then here we have a 94 year old. 94, 97, 94, 97. Now, I'm sure that he has had a, a more difficult life because um, he is from like the World War II era. And uh, I can't remember, but I think he's from Ukraine in, I don't know. So he, he's probably had a much more difficult life with like different struggles than President Nelson, but still. Anyway, that's just a side note. So... This was a huge deal. This was a huge deal. Um, because, look, it says, Israel's final uh, prince of the Torah, they called him prince of the Torah, dies, last signpost before Messiah, according to Talmud. And then here he is right here. This is like his home. And then you have all the mourners all around. And then afterwards, subsequently, there were almost a million people that attended his... Um, funeral and, and they they uh, th there was like a lot of concern about safety and um people were jumping over the cemetery fences and this was like a really really big deal he was he was so influential uh rabbi kaim uh kanievsky or kanievs Kanievsky, this generation's preeminent Torah leader, and known among the Haredim, which is like the Haredis, they're the, um, what you might call ultra-Orthodox Jews, with like, you know, the black hats and all that, um, the prince of the Torah passed away on Friday, this was a couple weeks ago, during Shushin Purim, I don't care how that's pronounced, at 94. Born in Poland, okay, Poland, in 1928, Rabbi Kanievsky moved to Israel with his family when he was six years old and never left the country. Uh, but go watch that, that video for more details. But it's just, it's interesting. This was a huge, huge happening back then. And now, just a few weeks later. So this was, let's see, March 20th. So let's look at our calendar over here. Um, March 20th, that was over here. That was in Adar 2. Um, interestingly, Adar 2 is uh, a leap month in the Jewish calendar. So it's like they add it. Instead of like adding an extra day like we do to February for leap years, uh, they have to add an entire month and they call it Adar 2. So he, di he died during that month, which I don't know if there's any significance be uh, behind that. But we have, so he died here. Actually, he died on Friday, I think it said. Um, so one, two, three. Only three weeks later, uh, we have this news of um, Silman. Edit, or Edit, Edit Silman, that's pulling out, which could trigger something bigger. Um, if we look at the list of prime ministers, okay. Uh, let's just kind of go through. So there's been, there, uh, Neftali Bennett, he's the 13th. Okay, 13. Interesting. It's an interesting number. 12 is an interesting number. Um, make of it what you will, whether it, that's meaningless or wh whatever you think. So if you go to the top, what's interesting is that the first prime minister, his name was David. Obviously, that that's clearly... Uh, seems to be significant. I would not be surprised if that's significant, that the first prime minister of the modern Jewish state, his name is David. Like, really? Uh, that That is like, I think that was meant to be. After that, we have Moshe uh, Charette. And Moshe is uh, how they say Moses. So you had David, Moses. Then we have a Levi right here, which is also interesting. Come on. David Moses, and then we have Levi, you know, the tribe of Levi is known for the priesthood, so there's something kind of interesting going on with the names here, but uh, let's move on. And then you have Yigal, Alan, uh, Golda Mir, Yitzhak, um, 
which this is like a variation of Isaac, uh, Yitzhak, Robin, Monikim, Begin, uh, that seems like that, well, whatever, Yitzhak, Shamir, Shimon Perez. Now, this is kind of where I start to recognize, um, uh, prime ministers. I don't, I don't remember any of these people before, but Shimon Perez, Perez I do. Uh, and that's probably, that's probably a variation of Simeon, right? Simeon's one of the, uh, 12 tribes. So that's interesting. Uh, and he's number eight, right? Another significant number to us, uh, as members of the church. So, um, Okay, so we have Simon, Shimon uh, Perez, and then Yitzhak Shamir, and then Yitzhak Robin, and then back to uh, Shimon, Shimon Perez. This is probably, it was probably during this time that he came on my radar. Not so much when he was in office the first time, but probably this time right here in 1995. After that, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, right, for three years. So that's when he first comes on the scene. And then we have the name Benjamin. And then after that, Ehud Barak. And then after that, Ariel Sharon. And then after that, Ehud um, Olmert. And uh, I wonder if Ehud is like, is derived from Judah, possibly. Ehud. I want to look that up. Ehud. Wait. Ehud meaning... Um, it just says he that praises, uh, whatever. I'm not, that's not the point of this video. Okay. And then after that, okay, now we're in, you know, more recent times we have Benjamin Netanyahu for 12 years, for 12 years. And then after that, uh, where we're currently at, Naftali Bennett, and then depending on how this situation plays out, uh, we could see someone else. Uh, in this spot shortly, which is uh, kind of astounding to me. I, I'm not, I don't know enough about Israeli politics to like be able to predict what's going to happen or even have a very good opinion, but it's something that we're probably going to want to watch. I heard somewhere, and I wish I could have a reference for it or substantiate, sub, substantiate it, but I heard um, somewhere, someone was saying that uh, Netanyahu was under the belief because he had spoken to a prominent rabbi, rabbi, and I don't know if it was Rabbi um, Kanievsky, but that he was going to be the last prime minister before Messiah, right? So that obviously uh, didn't happen, and uh, of course you and me are not expecting what they're expecting, but it's still kind of interesting to note. So this is where we're at. Uh, we're coming up on Passover, which has triggered her to um, pull out because they were wanting to go ahead and allow uh, leavened bread in hospitals. And now, potentially, is Israel's government is in jeopardy. And who knows where we go from there. Um, there was also, let's see... Let me just read a, another thing here. Not not like really out of the article, but it says, will political uncertainty in Israel lead to Iran conflict? Yeah, this is like a really bad time for this to happen because uh, that one guy, Amir, uh, the one that, I can't remember the name of his channel, but he's like the Israeli guy that, um, he, he's from Israel. He's a Messianic Jew. Um, a lot of Christians follow him. But he was, he said, and I haven't been able to find this anywhere else, so I, I take it with a grain of salt, but he said that there was a cleric in Iran that has made some calculations based on the Quran, and that they feel that this is going to be the last Ramadan before Israel is destroyed. So we, uh, we were looking at that, and interestingly, Ramadan, it, it started, I don't know if it, if their calendar always lines up with the Hebrew calendar, so, but so I don't know how interesting or not it is. But there, but Ramadan started on uh, the second, which was also the first day of the Jewish uh, year, Nisan. Uh, it was also the day of General Conference. So General Conference, Ramadan, first day of the Jewish year. Uh, those all lined up this year. So. 
there's been a wave of terrorist attacks in Israel, like a big wave, and they're very concerned. And they're uh, well, I did a whole video on that. Uh, just go back a couple videos if you want more details. But they are on heightened alert, and they're expecting uh, essentially a, a similar conflict uh, as what happened last year. If you'll think back to last year, things escalated really fast, and there was a, a pretty intense. Uh, war, you know, um, but it died down, but they're worried that this will happen again, and then we were considering different scenarios in that in that video that I did about, well, if enough people take that seriously, if that's actually a thing that some cleric came up with, and enough people take that seriously, including the Iranian government, because um, it's, basically, it's basically a theocracy, from my understanding, in Iran. Um, you have the top, uh, I, I think it's called Imam, and he's really kind of the one that's in control. So if he accepts it, I mean, who knows? Who knows what could happen? You know, I'm not saying that it will, uh, but it, is this kind of like a Russia situation where I, I didn't think that Russia would be doing what it's doing right now. I thought that maybe they would kind of carve off more of Ukraine, Luhansk, and um, Donetsk. And that was it. But they've they've invaded the whole country. So, is this another situation where it's like, no, nah, it's probably not going to happen. But then, yes, no, it, it happened. Um, I don't know. <sighs> I don't know. We'll have to see. But this just made things uh, a little bit worse. And now people are wondering, is uh, Iran going to take advantage of this situation? Um... And then in this one, it just says, uh, Silman's coalition defection catches her political partners off guard, which is a little bit suspicious because you have to wonder, you know, is she genuinely doing this? Was she threatened? Um, is there something else going on behind the scenes? I don't know. Uh, coalition whip uh, Edith Silman's shocking announcement that she was defecting from the coalition sent political shockwaves across Israel on Wednesday morning. That's today. And she says, My key values are inconsistent with the coalition's current reality. I hear the voices in the field and the sincere protest raised by the voters who supported us and with, and with whose support we were elected, and also to the pain uh, of those who did not vote for us but belong to the national camp. I can no longer bear the damage to values and causes that are essential and right, end quote. She wrote in her resignation letter to Prime Minister Naftali Bennett. In the letter, Silman specifically accused the government of undermining Israel's, Israel's Jewish character, writing, uh, quote, and this, we, re we read this before, I will not abet the harming of the Jewish identity of the, of the state of Israel and the people of Israel. Oh, actually, that's a little bit different from what we read. Okay, so that's the latest news uh, in Israel, and who knows what that means. Um, maybe things will smooth over, maybe they won't. Uh, well, we'll just have to see. Um, that's it for this one. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it. Uh, leave what, your thoughts below. What do you think is going to happen? Uh, do you think everything's going to kind of smooth over and everything's going to be okay? Do you think there's going to be... Uh, is I, do you think Iran's going to do anything? Do you think that we're going to be seeing a new Israeli Prime Minister? What, what do you think is going to happen? Um, make sure to share this with anyone that's interested in Israel and Judaism, and I'll talk to you guys later.